guys, it's April and it's review time! So a little while ago I got the opportunity to go to Tosca Lee's pre-release of Firstborn and it was absolutely amazing. I got to talk with Tosca Lee and pick up this beautiful copy of Firstborn. Firstborn is the second book in the Progeny series, so if you haven't read Progeny yet, I recommend that you go and do that because this is going to contain spoilers. There is no way I can talk about a second book without talking about spoilers. So that is going to be a thing. So I will do this review the same way I do all of my other reviews. I will have the non spoilery section first and then when I start to get into the spoiled filled thoughts I'll let you know so that if you decide that you don't want to be spoiled that you can leave then and then come back later so we can start a conversation. Now Firstborn by Tusca Lee takes place after Progeny takes off. So Audra is still putting together pieces of her past but now she is desperately trying to get her hands on the diary because Luca has been captured by the historian and is being threatened. And the story just continues on in this really fast-paced world travel amazing way where you get to see bits and pieces of history thrown into the story and then you just get to see amazing parts of the world. And I understand why the story was as fast-paced as it was. It didn't take me very long to read it. It's not very long in general and it was a very adventure-packed read and so that meant a very fast-paced plot However, that fast-paced plot left me feeling a little bit like it was repeating itself. There was never a chance to fully catch your breath. It was just something happened, you have to run, we think we're safe, and suddenly we're not. And it's just this, this cycle. And I wanted to just sit down. I wanted to breathe. I wanted to get more of the story. I wanted to get more of the characters. But because of how much happens in this book, I never really, really, really got that. And then there was this huge lead up to the end of the novel, and then it just kind of ended. It was almost anticlimactic and too easy in my brain. A little, little too easy. And I love the idea of a duology. I just feel like there could have been so much more told in this story. There were some loose ends that weren't fully wrapped up that I think could have been fleshed out a little more and I would like to see that. And I'm wondering if some of those little short stories that are going to be going along with these two books may flesh those out a little bit. But overall I just felt like I ran this like really really hard race and then I was stopped before I could even cross the finish line. I did like what this book was doing with the story and the plot and it was a great adventure to be on. I just wanted more of the characters. I wanted more of the history. I, I always want more. I don't know why. But if you're looking for a quick, fast-paced story, this is most certainly it. Okay, so now for some of my spoiled, filled thoughts. Okay, so I like ish the relationship between Audra and Luca except for sometimes it felt like they were too wrapped up into each other. I, I have an issue sometimes with those kind of romance when the fate of the world is in the balance and these people keep on choosing people they know. I know it's human nature to do that but when throughout the whole book it's just constantly them going back and forth like that it drives me nuts. Like, I want further development. I know you guys really, really, really like each other, but can we, we see something else besides your great epic love? I mean, I, may, maybe that's just the cynic in me. That might be the cynic in me. But yes, I get it. Adra and Luca. Match made in heaven. The perfect thing to ever happen. And they want to save each other from death. But if they're both constantly saving each other from death, it's most likely that they're just both gonna die. It's, it's just gonna be a thing. And I mentioned before how fast-paced the plot was. I didn't feel like I got to know anybody any better. They all felt very surface level because of that and there were some great side characters in the story that I felt could have really been pulled in and gotten to know and would have made the story so much more but because it was just boom 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 and as soon as she gets back with other people it's like oh no I must keep these people safe run away kind of deal. Ah, uh, yeah. So I'm hoping the extra short story volumes that she is putting out right now will help me get to know some of those characters a little better because this world is absolutely amazing and could be beautiful and that could be a thing. And I, I want to see a little bit more of that and I didn't ever really get that. And I also still struggled with understanding 
how the progeny had this weird persuasion power, and then how the line of the hunters and the historian, how they had this weird memory power. Where did these things randomly come from? I don't understand. Just, did they just poof into existence? And how is it? It just seems so convenient that they they both have this weird ability and they can both like battle each other. And I don't know. It was there and it was a thing. And then the fact that Audra was first born and suddenly had this huge powerful gift and then just ended everything by pulling a plane out of the sky. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. It just seemed too convenient for me. And then the ending where suddenly we found mom again, even if she doesn't have her memory, that part got wrapped up too nicely for me, but then we still have some hunters and some progeny dying and it's a mess, but we're, I don't know. This, this book, has so much in it and it just kind of left me well okay I read that if you've read this book tell me down below what your final thoughts are because I am I'm just here yep that's a thing and I heart your beautiful faces bye